But yeah, Reggie Fusume and stuff. Like, anybody big at Nintendo that everybody knows, you think of them and you think of a certain sense, you get kind of intimidated in a way, because there's a certain professionalism there. It's not... Like, you forget that they're just people. And that's the case with any job interview you go on, because you're trying to promote yourself to these people who hold so much power above you in the sense that they have the job and they're offering the job that you want and you have to prove that you're worth it. So they're immediately better than you in that context and it's intimidating. But yeah, I don't know, I just... that just came to my mind. Once again, kind of going back to how I started this thing, talking about how I was at the beach, there's a constant pressure of real life all the time. And I feel like these video games get in the way, but then you look at a job like Localization Writer that is associated with video games, and that's a job! There's nothing shameful about that at all. That's an awesome job that people are envious of. And, uh... It's just the context of, are you making money playing the games, or are you just playing the games like an idiot? Which is what they're there for. They're supposed to be a game. A game is to have fun and take stress off of life and stuff. There's nothing shameful about that, but it's when you do it too much. Which kind of goes to another thing that I like to talk about is like... By age 40, what have you done with your life, professionally? That would look good on a resume. What, what is your portfolio? Even if it's a job that doesn't require a portfolio. Like, what is... What have you done? And what can you actually do at this given moment? Like the people who make this thing. This is a randomizer. They, I would say they bettered Ocarina of Time. This game that is pretty much flawless and widely acclaimed and stuff. They made it better, even just looking at this D-pad display. A hotkey for the ocarina and the two boots. But yeah, I'm envious of the people who created this randomizer and stuff, because it's like... That's impressive. It requires knowledge of coding, knowledge to create the website that can actually generate the program and stuff. And it's like, what are we doing? We're just playing it. Yeah, I don't know, that's my thing, like, going back to what I said in the beginning, how being in the real world in a vacation-like setting, when you're actually doing stuff out there with people, whether you're having fun or not, even just sometimes the concept of doing something in the real world that feels like the right thing to do successfully or whatever. Like, even just going to work sometimes. If you do that long enough and you come back to playing video games, you kind of hate yourself. Because you know you could be doing something better. But then again, it's like, going back to the definition of a game, there's nothing really wrong with it, it's just how you abuse it. I have this big thing about by age 40, and that goes back to just looking at these people, like sitting in the hot tub with my relatives who are now 60, that I remember being 35. And it's like, the stuff that they did, their success by the time they were my age, I don't have that yet. And I compare myself to that, and it's like, yeah, that's the best way to describe it, is like, by age 40, what is your portfolio? Like, what have you done that is of any redeeming factor whatsoever? There's nothing wrong with a game. But it's how you abuse it, which goes to your own self-moderation and stuff. Which is like any... Any vice in life or whatever... Can be abused, right? Alcohol, drugs... You do it too much and you run into trouble. Anything fun, really, is kind of bad in that sense. You gotta moderate it, otherwise you lose everything. But yeah, the idea of moderating yourself... Playing a game... Or even doing anything. It's very interesting to me that your hard creative work could end up being somebody's worst addiction. I don't know, it's a crazy thing to think about. Like, making, designing a video game or doing anything related to making the game and being part of the development team, that's an honorable, impressive thing. It's, it's work and it's creative and there's nothing bad that could be said about it at all. But then if all you're doing is playing those games and not actually growing yourself professionally in any way, shape, or form. That's probably the most shameful thing in the world that you would want to hide from everybody. That's just a fascinating thing to me that something that could be seen as such fantastic work and very creative could actually be terrible for somebody else because they just have fun with it, you know? I, I said it better before when I, I said your hard creative work can become somebody's worst addiction. Or maybe not a, a full-blown addiction, but an obstacle that impedes their growth as a person. In this case, 
video games, playing them too much, and using all your hours of the day to play a game rather than grow yourself in any other way, whether it be get a second job or climb the ladder in your current job by improving your skills and all those hours that you're spent playing the game to relax. Yeah, it's funny, it's, it really is money. Money is the difference between something being shameful or impressive. Like, no matter what, you need money. That's your gateway to a lot of things. But the money thing, dude. I don't think money, even in itself, is in, it's not all about a huge salary or even finding the job that you love or doing what you love. Money, to me, is a requirement to uphold a deep need to be loved and belong socially. Because without people, you get sick. That's the bottom line. You lose hope and resilience. It's like, standing alone, you can't become a champion or anything. You can't overcome... I don't think you can mature surrounded alone by endless defeat. You need people. And the only way to get people is to have money, which gives you acceptance. And only from that acceptance then can you grow as a person. Because you have the people and the keys and the network to find all the different pathways, rather than just being stuck alone, surrounded by miserable defeat because you have no money or anything to remark success. Like, that's the true importance of money to me. It's that deep need to be loved and belong socially. Which money has morphed and twisted the world into such a way that it's that important that without it, it's very hard to get that social need. Because we're people, man. We have a social need. No matter how you spin it. But going back to the money thing, how you need money to be accepted and you need that acceptance in order to grow. I think for that same reason, love is required. Because no matter who you are, eventually your light goes out. Probably because you're broke, right? And you're just struggling to find that acceptance and grow at all. And you need somebody else, a spark from somebody else, to relight your flame, as they say. That's what love is, isn't it? You need to be revived. And that's the thing, so many of us are just dead wandering the earth. And most messed up of all is probably the fact that many die still wandering. Some never even get a chance because of something screwed up. Maybe like a world leader or something, I don't know. Or just an unfortunate, tragic illness or something. But you see, all this deep stuff, man, this is how my brain works. I analyze the quiet moments like I keep on saying. And, like, I attack it as if it's, like, some kind of playoff game before a trophy or something. Like, I'm desperately fighting to find meaning in, like, every little instance of quiet. In some way that can be written down and kind of, like, look good somehow. When it's all fully formulated into a good sentence and thought. But it's a weird paradox. Like, this idea of endlessly searching for happiness, but feeling most empowered when everything is miserable. Because sometimes stillness hurts the most, I've found. Just sitting idle, waiting for anything at all to happen. Like, that's true misery. But when you're actually fighting to make a meaning, that's when you feel most empowered. It's weird. There's, uh, there's something messed up in society that makes us all endlessly search for happiness as if it's an end goal. And I don't know. I think that's where my weird obsession with finding meaning in everything and being able to formulate a thought that I could write down as a sentence. Like, I need that. Otherwise, everything is just loose cannon. Just nothing makes sense. And it's just a string of nothingness. That's why, like, when I say I go on vacation for five days and I could enjoy the days and be in the moment and laugh with people, but I need to know why it's fulfilling or like I don't, I don't it's very very hard to explain i can't formulate this thought into a well-constructed sentence yet and it bothers me but there's something there that needs to be fully solved and makes sense and until it makes sense until that epiphany happens it's just a string of moments with no meaning and nothing and i can't make sense of it and i don't know what i'm doing and i'm absent-minded and everything is terrible it's just stillness, waiting for everything to be as it's supposed to be. And it, 
It's a weird thing, and I think that's the deep root of my depression, is because... It's looking for control, much like these video games. Like, I was going back to that. Video games give you a sense of control because there's a start and end point and there's rules to follow and you master it and every single time you can do it again and again and again and it puts control in your life that you don't have in the real world because life does not work that way. And I think... Between a combination of just the way that we learn and maybe playing a lot of video games and stuff, like, I'm trying to force a sense of control in real life knowing even that it's impossible to do that like there's still a weird need to try anyway and that's why like I feel like I need to formulate these deep thoughts and have these deep sentences that would maybe look good on like a page of deep quotes or something I don't know because there's so many things like that in life too like so many things you hear on a daily basis that are like an idiom or something, or a proverb. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But you don't actually get it until you get it. And it's like this weird moment that just happens where you're like, holy crap, I understand now. Even though you've heard the thing like 200 times over. Oh, dude, I just remembered something else that I haven't said yet. Um, the whole thing, going back to the money thing and how I said originally that like it's not all about the salary or doing what you love, but I think there is an importance to doing what you love because some work is actually fun, or maybe fulfilling is the better word. Like, remember when you were a kid and you would just sit in color? Or if you're somebody who draws, drawing and coloring are a perfect example of something that could be work that is actually kind of satisfying or editing videos is the same way like anything that re you really get lost in and you just like love doing the work and you just crave to do more of it like that's super important and that kind of goes hand in hand with what i'm saying about feeling empowered in this moment of fighting to find meaning and all this crazy stuff that my brain is doing what's happening it's just it sparks flying everywhere man as always thank you for shopping at walmart <laughs>